After a tiger called Sheba attacked a man and was ultimately killed, Joburgers have been amazed at videos circulating of a second tiger on the loose in Edenville. On community groups, there was a huge concern this morning about children at schools in the vicinity. So let's look at the legalities around owning exotic pets in South Africa. Tigers, if you can believe it, are classified as exotic pets. Pets. We're joined by the National Council of SPCA's Wildlife Protection Unit Manager, Douglas Walata. Uh, thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. Walata. Tell us, uh, firstly, do you know about this latest tiger? There were some reports that it had been um, tracked down and, and darted, but we could not confirm any of those reports today. What do you know? Uh, yeah, good evening to you and, and the viewers. Um, yeah, it's, it's been one of the, the it's, it's like a clandestine secret operation that's been going on because it's very hard to secure any information as to what really is going happened with this tiger. Um, there was footage circulated today, which we know was um, part of the rescue with the Aspidal Foundation and Seaview Predator Park. Uh, so until we actually have conclusive evidence that this tiger has in fact been caught, um, then, you know, we, we've got to consider her as, as still out there and, you know, and people need to be wary. All right. So, so you can't even confirm that uh, we continue to try and verify those reports. Can you confirm that currently there is no law against having a tiger in your backyard? In, in certain provinces, in Gauteng, definitely. Um, the, there's a loophole in, within the bylaws. Um, I mean, you can't have a cow in your backyard. Um, you can't have a lion, but you can have a tiger. So because of that loophole where your definition of animal um, does not include an ex exotic animal, that's the loophole that people are using. So it's because it's classified as exotic. I understand you can't have anything that's classified as indigenous or wild. Uh, like a, a lion, like you say. So you can't keep a lion, but you can keep a tiger simply because of definitions. Is that what you're saying? Exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, it's the definition that, that that's causing the downfall and allowing these animals to be kept as pets in backyards. And, and apparently you don't even need a permit or, or anything like that unless you're actually transporting the animals or, or you're importing them or moving them from, from another province. It's incredible. So nothing really is required. Um, yeah, when you put it like that, the only the only act that actually protects these animals is the Animals Protection Act, the act that we enforce. But that and that's that's related to the animals' welfare. So it, and it's really difficult with a lot of these cases to get a prosecution set up um, because of the intention of the, of the act as well. But it, it doesn't stop us from trying. So where, where we do have cases and we can prosecute in terms of the Animals Protection Act, then we can take those steps. But it's got to start from somewhere higher to start to stop it before we have to get to those stages. Well, well can you explain a little bit more? There was reportedly a case in Boxburg um, and, and the SBS. SPCA there said the only jurisdiction was, like you said, around the protection of the animal itself. Uh, but surely there's a concern around abuse or around the, the welfare of a tiger if it's kept in a garden where there's a few meters. These are animals used to roaming free in expansive areas. So on that basis, you're saying if you know of a tiger in a backyard, there's not much you can do. I mean, what does the, the Protection Act allow you to do? So you can't walk in and confiscate the animal? No, it's got to be a clear contravention in terms of the Animals Protection Act. Um, and you've, you've got to look at it in context with everything else. So if you look at the zoos and the Aquarius um, sands codes, for example, there's no minimum um, enclosure size that's given. There's fencing policies in place for, like for Gauteng, for a lion, you can't keep a lion in less than 100 hectares. But because it's tigers, there's the difference. So when we look at, we weigh it up and, and look at the tiger's health, we look at the enrichment, because sometimes space isn't everything, it's what you're doing with that space that counts a lot more. So you can be using your space in a three-dimensional manner and get the most for the animal. 
So that's what makes these these cases so difficult for any uh, society inspector or, or council to to find a, a case that we know we can get to court and we can win this without a doubt. And we don't want to take a half-baked case to court. We want to take a case to court that we know there's abuse and that we will win. Sure, uh, this this is really incredible. So there are safety concerns for the people around the children. I understand the police can deal with that, and there is a court case now uh, because of Sheba attacking a man. Uh, so, so you're saying that that is just outside of your jurisdiction, but we'll have to see how that court case plays out. Um, no, that, that court case is in terms of the Animal Matters Amendments Act, which is. Um, Governed, well, administered by um, the, the South African Police Services. So that's that, that's when an animal has caused damage to either a person or property and gives the person the right to claim back against the owner of the animal. So it's, it's, it's a very different charge to one of um, the Animals Protection Act, which that act would afford to you yeah. uh, or for, afford to the animal. Yeah, so, so it seems like the law only allows for recourse if something happens once the animal gets out. Do, do you agree with me there? To a, to a degree, yes, uh, I do agree with you. There should be, there should be play, um, bylaws in place which protect people as well as animals. It's like I was saying earlier, if you've got, you can't keep a cow in your backyard, you can't keep a sheep, but you can keep a tiger. And, and none of that actually makes sense to us because if you're looking at the health and safety aspect of, of the residents of especially the Urkuleni municipality, that, that's something that should be driven at a really high level and really hard because people, people's health and safety is at risk, yeah. as well as the animals' enrichment and land welfare. Uh, are you as the NSPCA lobbying or pushing for a change? Uh, we, we are. Um, we've been very vocal about, about the, our stance on keeping exotics as pets and, and more especially these big cats because they are... You know, these are animals that, that get so little protection. I, I mean, the tiger is listed as society's appendix one animal. So to trade with it internationally is extremely di difficult and restrictive. But in South Africa, we can do basically what we like with them with very little recourse. So, so things have to change and we've got to make, it, make those changes from the top down. Surely, I mean, uh, being kept in a backyard close to schools. My final question to you is, who owns tigers? Have you met some of these owners? And where do they get the tigers from? And, and why are they owning tigers? That's quite a big one question, that. <laughs> um, yeah, they, we have met the owners. We've been to do inspections at these, at these facilities. Um, and previously, we knew a lot of the tigers seemed to be coming in from the northwest province. From which facility we're not quite sure yet. You know, there's still um, those investigations, and because of the lack of permitting, it's very hard. It's a very hard trail to follow. Um, what we've also discovered is that there's breeding within the Khate. so that would negate the the entire whole purpose of getting an import permit, because you are breeding it within Khate, so therefore you don't need a, an import permit. So, and that that's part of the immediate regulations that need to change is that there should be a database of all these animals that are being kept in private residences or any other facility, plots, wherever, because then at least the authorities um, such as GDOD, as well as ourselves, know where these animals are and we can then better inspect and check up on them. All right, uh, thank you for this discussion from the National Council of SPCA's Douglas Wallata.